All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Another match, another match preview. Chelsea's facing Southampton in the Carabao Cup. Don't ask me what round it is. I've not checked that out. But nonetheless, we've got Southampton in the Carabao Cup um, tomorrow. This time, uh, the kickoff is on. And um, look, we're actually going to start the conversation from some Chelsea news, which is uh, breaking at the moment. It's about Christensen, mostly about Christensen, but obviously Antonio Rudiger's um, contract talks have been going on for a little while as well. But this is the latest, and uh, we need to start from here in order to talk about this particular upcoming match because I feel Christians are probably starting this particular match against Southampton. And it goes something like this. Chelsea's contract talks with Andres Christensen have stalled over pay, as reported by Nizar Kinsella. He's done a piece on it. Still an expectation that it will be resolved. Christensen is out of contract at the end of the season. And Christensen is not the only one that's in this particular boat. Um, there's quite a few players that's actually out of contract. As Pilicueta has got seven months to go. Rudiger, as we all know, it's been well documented, seven months to go as well. Christensen, seven months to go. Thiago Silva, seven months to go. Um, Chalaba, one year, seven months. Still a little bit of time left, but there's talks that there is a long-term lucrative contract that's being um, planned for, the, for, for Chalaba. But as you can see, some superstars, as Pilicueta, Rudiger, Christensen. But the biggest one is Christensen, in all honesty, at the moment, because there was talks that this particular contract extension was done and dusted. Fabrizio Romano, not that long ago, tweeted that it's just a matter of formalities now. Paperworks are going to get done. I'll be absolutely amazed if we don't tie up something for Christians and ASAP. Um, look, Rudiger is... We, we, we can't be in a situation where we lose both Christians and, and uh, Rudiger because, for me, these two are... Some of the best defenders in world football at the, at the moment, if not the best, Christensen and Rudiger, I, I will seriously find it difficult to find better defenders out there than them at the moment. And I want to ask you guys, I mean, can you name off the top of your head any particular defenders that are better than them at the moment? Virgil van Dijk is probably the only one that comes into my mind. And even him, he's come back from a particular injury. And I don't know if he's at 100% level at the moment. And on top of that, this is what bothers me a lot more. Chelsea have been offered Matthias De Ligt from Juventus, but the defender is on 280000 a week currently. I mean, how are we even thinking about entertaining this idea about getting Matthias De Ligt for 280000 a week? That's what he's on in Juventus. I highly doubt he's going to take a pay cut to come to Chelsea. If anything, he's probably going to expect more. How are we thinking about entertaining something like this when... We can't even offer players like Rudiger and Christensen. Apparently, Christensen, we can't even offer him 150,000. He's on something like 70,000 a week at the moment, and we can't even give him 150,000. And we are trying to entertain the thought of getting someone like Matthias De Ligt for 280,000, which is incredible. Um, and similarly with Jules Kunde, apparently, Jules Kunde, we were willing to offer him 200,000 a week on top of the transfer fee, but we can't give that to Rudiger. So I want to have a look at a few more other news from um, Absolute Chelsea. <clears throat> Chelsea are still in talks with Antonio Rudiger over a new contract. He wants to stay, but there is no agreement yet. This is Fabrizio Romano. They both want to stay, in all honesty. Both Rudiger and Christensen want to stay. Andres Christensen, Chelsea's future is uncertain as there has been no contra contact between the club and the player since August. I don't know what Fabrizio Romano was saying because literally four days ago, five days ago, Fabrizio Romano stated that Christensen's contract extension is just a matter of time now. It's, it's just formalities. Both Antonio Rudiger and Christensen want to stay. This is the crazy part. They both want to stay at Chelsea, yet we are leaving it for till the end to make this happen. We should have signed, you know, tied both of these up ASAP. They've been the Best defenders under Thomas Tuchel. Our defensive record is ridiculous. There's a tweet that's going around. Since Thomas Tuchel has taken over, we've pre we've had more clean sheets than goals conceded. Like that just says everything that you want to know about our defense at the moment. And it's a lot to do with Rudiger, Christensen, of course, Silva, 
Aspilicueta and the likes, and obviously in recent time Chalaba as well. Andres Christensen really wants to stay at Chelsea, but feels undervalued at the club due to a low contract offer from Niza. I don't know how Chelsea finds the audacity to give these players a low contract when they've been one of our best players in the team. I mean, if we're talking about from a financial standpoint, are, are Chelsea worried about creating a precedent by giving them a higher offer? Are they worried that our oh, future offers will have to be at that level when we bring in new players? I mean, you've got to be able to negotiate better in those circumstances. You've got to be able to tell the players that, no, we can't give you what Christensen and Rudiger earns because they've been proven. You've need, you need to prove before you can ask for those sort of salary. And Christensen, the rumor is we can't even give him 150000 a week, which is ridiculous. We are giving other players higher wages when they've not even done anything for the club. Danny didn't drink water, 110000 I mean, come on, come on. We need to do a lot better financially and figure out the base case scenario so that we don't affect the wage structure, but at the same time, we need to keep some, some of these key players or else our backbone of the team is just going to be dismantled and... That's the last thing I want for Thomas Tuchel. Okay, let me know what your thoughts are in regards to Christensen and Rudiger. I still think we're going to find a solution for Christensen. I'm not too confident about Rudiger, though. Um, next up, I do want to talk about Livramento and Broha, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, Southampton um, Twitter page is absolutely buzzing with these players. Uh, this is one player that's not going to be available um, against us tomorrow. Saints will be with them. Moy El Naosi for Tuesday's trip to CFC. To CFC. Ralph Hassan Hudul has confirmed. Um, he's a decent type player. I mean, look, uh, hopefully it's not going to cause too much of an issue. Um, Tina Livermore, just the fourth player, age 18, young, younger to score a Premier League goal for Saints. He scored during the week. And I want to talk a little bit about Livermore and, um, and Armando, Armando Broja. Livermore obviously will be able to play against us because it was a permanent. Uh, purchase from Southampton. We do have the buyback clause, uh, roughly around 40 million or something. And someone's saying even 60 million. I don't know. I think it's about 40 million. Um, and Armando Borja is one that can't play against us because he's on loan from Chelsea. But these two players, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, are the best players for Southampton, hands down. Armando Borja gave Southampton their first victory with the goal, not the last weekend, that just went the weekend before. And um, Livermento is probably their best player in the football club from the right side. He's probably their creative hub. He's so, so electric from that right side as well. Scored a goal during the weekend to equalise, and then Broha scored, I believe, to take uh, Southampton ahead, and then Maxwell Cornet uh, for Burnley equalised. But these two players, honestly, guys, I have no doubt they're going to come back to Chelsea. We're going to undoubtedly trigger the buyback clause for Tina Liberman. If there's a right-sided player that would have suited massively from, in, in terms of as a right wing-back for us, Tina Livermento fits that bill to the T. This guy's skill set, he's so attacking. He wants to take players on, wants to use his pace, drives into the box. And there was a couple of moments in that particular match against Burnley where he had other chances as well, cut back in, took a shot with his left. He's got it all. He's got it all. He's, he's fearless, to be honest, on that right side. And Armando Broja as well looked amazing. His goal against Burnley was brilliantly taken. This is the thing about Armando Broja. He is a genuinely good finisher. And I've got no doubt he's actually going to make it uh, as a Chelsea player. These Cobham boys, we need to start respecting some of these academy players a lot more than what we really do. Look at our team against Norwich. Reese James, Mason Mount, Trevor Chalaba, Callum Anton Odoi, um, Ruben Loftus Cheek. I mean, it's incredible. Tell me how many Premier League teams out there that can fill that many academy players in the starting lineup. And then you throw in Armando Brojo as well. I've got no doubt he's going to make it. Check out some of his finishing in recent times, not just for club, but for country as well. Unbelievable finishing, robust up front, quite physical as well, um, has pace. And as I said, finishing technique is very, very good. So just stay tuned for these two. Honestly, I think they're going to make it. Well, Broha will come back to Chelsea and will make it at Chelsea. Hopefully next season he becomes a you know understudy to 
Lukaku and gets a bit of game time off the bench. And Livermento, I think we get to trigger his contract, not next season, but the season after. But um, we need to look at the contract clause and whatnot. <clears throat> Let's get into the Chelsea predicted lineup where we're going to have quite a little bit of conversation as to who we sort of predict to play in this particular match. I think there's going to be quite a bit of um, rotation. Some of the fringe players, fringe players will get the opportunities, I believe, to you know make a claim to start in the Premier League and in the Champions League. So it'll be interesting to see who's going to start. From my perspective, honestly, I've not given too much thought. So here we go. Let me know what your thoughts are as well. Um, I'm, I'm really going to just go off the top of my head as to what's going on here. I'm going with Kepa here. Mendy can take a bit of a break. I mean, last couple of games for Mendy have been a bit of a break anyway. Um, since the Brentford game, Malmo was a bit of a, um, yeah, he was a spectator, to be honest. And um, our last game against Norwich, he was, he was literally a spectator, except for that one error from Ben Chilwell, where he had to, you know, stay alive, which, which is fine. You're going to have to be called upon once in a game, at least. And in all honesty, Mendy can take a bit of break. Time for Kepa to get his chance to shine. In the left CB position, Malanxa. Uh, he played really well against Brentford, I have to say. And I didn't have too much hope from, hope from him. But I would like to see him off the back of that match against Brentford to, to be able to give him another chance. And Rudiger can take a bit of a break. And um, Malanxa, let's see what he has to say. What, what he has to give in this particular match. I'm, I'm sure he's going to be buzzing. Huh? Hoping that he has a very good performance. In the midfield, I'm going to bring back Andres Christensen. Silver played in midweek. Christensen didn't feature. I'm going to bring in Christensen. And this is the thing. All these contract talks, I hope he can just put on another good performance and not worry about it. I'm still thinking he's going to get this contract sorted. I mean, he seems happy at the moment. I'm going to have him in the center of the center, back in the back three. In the right side, Aspilicueta had a game off against Norwich as well. I'm going to bring in Aspilicueta. And the reason I'm bringing in Aspilicueta is... I do want to play Reese James. I know Reese James played against Norwich, but he hasn't played enough since he got injured. He's slowly coming back into the team. I want to see a lot more of Reese James in the right wing back position and continue building that momentum. Next up is Newcastle. I don't want him to rest in this particular match. I want to see him building up that confidence on that right side. So Reese James for me in the left side. Chilwell can take a bit of break. He's played quite a bit of matches. Time for Alonso to come in. Alonso has been in good form this season, so don't mind him to get this particular game, and I think Chilwell will take a bit of a rest. This one, I think, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be Saul. He hasn't played, and I mean, if he doesn't start in this particular game, we might as well say, well, what was the point of the whole loan? I mean, I'm, I'm already asking that question anyway, but if he doesn't start here, it's just going to be ridiculous. So, Saul, this is your time, my man make the most of it try and see what you can give us uh you know give us a bit of a headache maybe for future um uh, team selections see what you got got to got to give in in carabao cup this is it this is your opportunity to shine ruben loftus cheek for me ladies and gentlemen will most likely start this and here's the thing i think he's going to play the deepest midfielder here but I, I would i would really like him to be more here to be honest and be box to box really because I'm thinking Saul's going to start, I think Ruben Loftus-Cheek will be the deep, deepest midfielder. Um, look, he's been very good in the position, don't get me wrong, but I want to see him more getting involved with goals and assists. Um, he's already got two assists in the Premier League, last one against Norwich, one against Southampton as well, prior to the previous um, international break. So Ruben Loftus-Cheek, I'm really looking forward to him uh, playing this match. For me, look, you guys are going to probably laugh at me, but Ziyech has to start this. I want to see this player. I know I'm biased. I love this player a lot. I want to see this player get an opportunity um, against Southampton in Carabao Cup. And I really want to see some confidence back from ZH, ladies and gentlemen. Really want to see some confidence back. And I want him to own this match alongside Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So let's hope we see the best of uh, Hakim Ziyech. He was looking pretty all right against Norwich. Came out firing, just spraying shots left, right and center. So let's see what ZH has to give us. I do want to continue on with Cho. And I do also want to see him start against Newcastle. He shouldn't be tied. He has not played enough this season to be tied. So I want to see Callum Antonador in this particular match um, and continue that momentum. Similarly with Reese James, a lot of people you, you may ask for Barkley, but honestly for me, it's Callum Antonador. Again, just electrify that left side. 
continue building that momentum and, and uh, yeah, just put another stake, put another claim for the Newcastle match. Make sure you start for that. Up front, it's Kai Havertz. That I would start, ladies and gentlemen. He did not have a very good game against Norwich. I want to give him another opportunity to make amends. And we don't have any other options, to be honest. Romelu Lukaku and Timo Bernard are still injured. Kai Havertz has to lead the line, and he did not have a very good game against Norwich. want to give him an opportunity. And this is your chance. Back some goals. We have immense squad depth to challenging all competition, and it's time these players step up and take this opportunity. So for me, Kai Havertz starts. Um, this is the lineup that I'd go with. Look, there'll be players that will be coming off the bench. I think there's five substitutions. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. So there'll be players coming off the bench. Barkley could possibly come off the bench. Kante could get some minutes. Mason Mann could get some minutes. Um, and so on and so forth, to be honest. So for me, this is the lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Kepa at the back, Saar, Andres Christensen, Aspilicueta, Rhys James, Alonso, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Saul, Kalamazan Odoi, Havertz, Ziyech. Let me know what your thoughts are with the lineup. This is my final thoughts, ladies and gentlemen. Look, as I said, we've got immense squad depth to compete in all competition. I expect us to go deep into this. I don't want to disregard this competition. Southampton most likely shouldn't put up a strong team. They, they probably will have rotation as well. But then again, whatever the case is, we should be able to beat Southampton. This particular team should be able to do the job. And some of these players got a point to prove if they want to start in the Premier League. So for me, we should be winning this. We should take this competition seriously, win as many silverware as possible. Under Thomas Tuchel, hopefully this is a golden era for us. And I'm expecting maybe a 2-3-0 victory, hopefully. Let me know what your thoughts are, ladies and gentlemen. If you've enjoyed this preview, smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Please subscribe. Let's get to 8,000 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. And the likes. Likes helps out a lot. Please like as much as you can. And hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time. See you.